Hello YouTube and welcome back. Yes, I'm still honing on this Hemi, getting it ready. Let's get back to the video I shot with Lake Speed Jr. when he came by and visited. This would be video number four. And I think the best bet is just get to it and we'll talk about it afterwards. Come on. We, we talked to us said you're done. It, it said we've faded it enough it, it, it has it, to start all over again. Right. So yes, old technology, uh, out, old engine, uh, um, old, old vintage engines. Put the new technology in and you'd be surprised to just, I mean, it's just, you get a way better engine. It's, oh, yeah. And, and it makes so much more power without, the old way would do, when Wait, it came in. you mean that you don't have to have an LS engine to have <laughs> modern technology? Yes. Did I, did I say that out loud? <laughs> I, I, I like to tell everybody on, on, the, on the Flathead Fords, I, I, I use my, my LS technology when I build a Flathead Ford. Yeah. So you, you can't unlearn something. So, yes. so you, you, yeah. you can learn something and then, okay, great. And then go back to your old ways on a flathead forward. No, that technology that I, that I learned mm -hmm. on, on that, you can't unlearn knowledge. And don't be scared of knowledge. Don't, you know, and knowledge might not be what you want to hear, but embrace it because it's, it's, it might not be what you want to hear, but you might have maybe a way to, to change for the better. Oh, exactly. uh, yeah, knowledge is never bad. I think most be, people want more horsepower. They like things that run more reliably. I, pretty they much like is, things that run cooler. Yeah. So, yeah, by applying the new technology even to older engines with all that's possible with the, without doing the old-fashioned way to doing it right the old-fashioned way to do it it'd come in and we'd up the compression we'd put yeah. we'd, we'd pop a pop-up pop piss in a big-ass cam and that's it with the price of fuel today <laughs> and, uh, yeah dude, so you can actually make an engine more efficient make more horsepower and end up getting better better fuel economy oh so I mean, think about these you know, marine guys who have to run you know 89 unleaded non-ethanol fuel because that's what they can get the marina yeah they're making 1400 horsepower on these things all the time oh i i have a um, Which i'm not sure what a, you uh, do with that but. um a donzi <laughs> with a blown big block and you try to go to the marina and and no when you're out of fuel you're out of fuel right you, you're done the marina doesn't have doesn't have fuel for that yeah yeah so so exactly a lot of times what i can say is how much you i mean with the price how much how fun is it when your car's in the garage because you can't drive it. No, yeah, cars so, are fun when you drive them. So we don't do the, the and even though everything now more efficient, we can have more compression, but that's not the way to do it anymore. Not run 12 and a half to one compression on a street car. You know, right. uh, you can get plenty of power with a, a 9.0. I mean, golly, you can be very efficient. If you have aluminum cylinder heads and, and you know how to tune, you can get 10 and a half on, on pump gas. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, but, but anyway, that being said, uh, uh, more efficiency, more bang for the buck, um, and you don't want to lose that through the rings out into your oil pan. No, because I'll tell you this, you know, my history was being the oil guy at Joe Gibbs and you know, formulating oil, testing oils uh, for race teams. Uh, fuel and blow-by is the absolute enemy of your oil, and your piston ring is your oil's greatest friend. Yep. So, yeah, you want to keep the fuel and all that stuff up here, not and, down and, in the crankcase. And even with the best rings, even with the, if money's no object, the, the, the best people, the best rings, everything, I tell everybody, because I, I get people go, no, all, you're gonna have compression gases going past the rings. Oh, yeah. There's just no way to have 100% of not one little bit of compression gases. That's just part of the, the nature of it. Right. But that's why you wanna, you, wanna, you wanna be in control of it. Right. I remember when the 5.0s came out. The 5 -oh Mustang, the Fox Body Mustang. Yep. They dominated the racing, especially when they started putting a, a turbos on them. Yep. But everybody, shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people uh, blamed the, the, the cylinder ring package uh, uh, with the five O's and they're trying to do all kinds of different things. The pro and they're going back to the older school thicker ring, thick, you know, and I'm talking about the, 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 the turbo guys they're doing yeah. this. You know what the problem was? Well, you, you, you know, you know what the problem was with this because of the, the less ring, uh, ring tension. Yep. Crankcase ventilation. Yeah. Is, is that's one of my, one of my videos that I've, uh, that I've been working on just right now is, is crankcase ventilation. People don't realize they take all that stuff off. And yeah. they put two breathers on. If it's a drag car, they put the evacuation system to the exhaust. And the first thing, when we were growing up, we bought a car, and the first thing we did, we put tires and wheels on it, and oh, we yeah. put a chrome air cleaner. Yes, and, sir. And, and <laughs> a set of Mickey Thompson valve covers. Yep. So I get it. We took all the ugly stuff off. The first thing we did was take off an EGR valve until I grew up and I knew the importance of an EGR valve. Yeah. But then, you know, the first thing we did is take all the emission stuff off, 
and put a, a, a good set of you know make a top to valve covers with dual breathers. Yep. Okay. All that worked back in the day because we had bigger. The five oh Mustang did not like that. No. If you don't have positive crankcase ventilation, if you're not pulling on the crankcase, the rings won't seal. Yep. Exactly. They need, they need vacuum for the rings to seal. Once the rings seal, the compression it holds them. Yep. But. Crankcase ventilation is really a strong part of perfect ring seal. Uh, um, 100%. I mean, that's, that's a big part of it. In fact, when we were working on my dad's new engine project, because of that old pump, I mean, it was only pulling about seven inches of crankcase vacuum. Well, it should probably pull about 14, but the modern cup stuff, those guys are pulling, you know, over 20 inches of vacuum. So we're not going to go all the way down to a 0.5 millimeter ring because we don't have the oil pump to, to, to get to there. That. So right? But we're going to go to a 0.7 millimeter ring because it can do that. But that's the whole, I mean, you're spot on. Having crankcase vacuum enables things you can do on top of it to make the whole ring, engine more efficient because that's the, really the story. Engines are systems. It's not a collection of parts. They are complex systems. So you need to think about your engine from a systems perspective and think about it from the perspective of what you're trying to accomplish. You can buy the best ring. You can have the cylinder finish the best. Mm -hmm. And these newer rings, thinner packages, like I said, if you don't pull a good vacuum on them, they're not going to seal. Right. And then you're going to go blame the machine shop or you're going to go blame. And everything nowadays is, is a low tension ring. So that's another thing too. Back in the day, we had high tension rings. Right. You know. And you don't want high tension rings because this wears your cylinder bore out faster. Yep. So to make your stuff live longer, you need a lower tension ring, but you need to have the complete package. And so it's just all about having the right mental approach to what you're trying to do. The understand right the fuel, understand the application, begin there, it will dictate everything else. Yes. And and like you said, the, the recipe, you don't want crappy soup. So right. or, or crappy chili. You take out one of these of, of everything. It, depending on what part you take out, you may not see much difference, but depending on what part you take out, you it may totally, totally see uh, um, like it's not working and you're blaming somebody else. But it's 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 the whole package. Yep. It it is the whole package, especially with like I said, rings are are, are the the most advanced uh, cams. Yes, but a lot, a, a cylinder finishes, uh, a cylinder rings, cylinder ring finishes. The coatings on them, I uh, mean, embrace it. Don't don't run away from it. Right. It's the number one source of friction in your engine. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the number one number one source of all. Uh, and, uh, 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 yeah. Of all the friction sources, and there's lots of them. More of it comes from this than anything and else. And does, does that include a flat type of cam? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I learned something today. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I would have agreed with uh, with that just not even knowing, but with the, with the roller cam, I thought we would have we would have. That it, still even, is the number even one. Even a direct bucket action, right? Because since you flat tap it, uh -huh. yeah. Still number one. So that ought to be uh, um, uh, the biggest eye opener right there. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, it's like when the Formula One guys start building brand new engines, they mm -hmm. call us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, how do we cut friction out of this thing? Because when you're turning a lot of RPM, the more RPM you turn, the greater contribution of the friction is. And the friction is just taken away from all that hard work and money that you oh, yeah. designed to build horsepower. Then now subtract the, the, the stuff that you're giving away freely. Friction, friction is the tax man, right? The, well, that's all, a good point. All, all the cool stuff. All comes from the camshaft, the manifold, the cylinder heads, all that cool stuff. Tax man shows up, that's friction, and it's trying to steal all the, all your fun. And so you had a hundred horsepower, and then, and the tax man comes in, and now you got eighty horsepower if you're right. lucky. Right. But yeah, so that's a good way to put it there. I yeah. like I, I like that. So because that's what you don't realize is that, golly, you'll spend a thousand dollars on something that gets you five horsepower, and yet on something that's less than that a set of rings. Yeah. And and you you won't spend the money on that. Well, I'll tell you one other one. Um, Oil level. Guys who have stroker engines, more times than not, have this factory pan or the stock pan, and they never change their oil level to compensate for the deeper stroke. And the windage is a, is oh man, and, I've seen twenty five horsepower and the twenty five horsepower one quart of oil doesn't have nothing to do with what you're doing to your bearings with all the air. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we yeah, don't even talk about that. Yeah, we're just talking just just the the windage. Yeah, just, just the windage just, alone. Just, just just the windage. Yeah, and on any other make the engine make the oil run hotter, makes the water run hotter. It's just with the air in the system. I mean, the oil bad. system it just turns everything up. Yeah. Uh, um, I when I tell everybody about about that, I go when you're next time you're at the pool, uh, put your hand flat 
and hit hit it when you're laying in the, in the yep. pool. Hit it now. Put your hand angled and hit it, and just just see how water also like 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 Bruce Lee. You know, water can be soft and water can be <laughs> hard. hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Bruce Lee. I enjoy it. There you go. <laughs> well, I I, I like uh, that's one of my smoking and Bruce Lee. You know, and <laughs> there and, you go. And, and and Tesla. Okay. There you go. Cool. <laughs> Well, man, thanks for letting me come by and hang out for a little bit. Oh, that's great. It, it's, it's amazing. We may, I think I'm still going to do it and, you know, may edit, may edit, might not, not edit out. I'm going to put myself on the sword and <laughs> I want to see something and I think y'all might want to see it too. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. Stay tuned for the last video. This will be the end of this video. And then there's a bonus video at the end. We're going to just play the whole thing without any interruptions at all. I'm going to get back to honing this cylinder. Well, actually, we're just about finished. I'm finishing up the last little part of the plateau home. So let me get to work. We'll see you on the next one.